Welcome to Academic Web Services Training. I'm your host, David Pinter. And in this session, what we're going to be talking about is creating a Photoshop droplet. And what a droplet is, basically, it's an executable file that was made up and converted from an action created inside of Photoshop. You simply create effects on one image, record those, and then convert that action to a droplet, open up other folders, and take your images and drop those images on top of that droplet, and then all of a sudden your effect will then occur on all of those images. But let me show you how that works. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up an image here, and then open up the actions palette. Now, if you don't see this little triangle here, it looks like a play button, you can just simply go over to Window and then come down to Actions. So again, here's our Actions palette. And then what I want to do is I want to take a look at all of these actions here. And these are all pre-made actions. What we want to do is we want to create our own folder and action. So I'm going to basically click that right there and then come down here and create our own set. I'm going to call this Sepia, like this, Set, and hit OK. Now, as you can see, we've created our own set. And what I want to do now is I want to now create the action that's going to go inside of it. So now that this is selected, I'm going to come down here and then click the plus sign. Once that is checked, I want to give this a name, Sepia Halftone, like that, and then hit record. Now notice down here, as soon as I hit record, you'll see that it is now recording with that little red light at the bottom of the actions palette. So the first thing that we want to do here is we want to create a sepia color. So I'm going to go simply Command U for Hue, hit Colorize down here on the side of the dialog box, and then slide this hue just over just a little bit, about seven, and then we're gonna bring the saturation up to about 30, like that, and then simply bring the lightness down a little bit, probably minus three, and that looks pretty good, we'll hit OK. There's a lot of light colors in here, so I wanna go to my Control L, like this, and then adjust the, that, as well. So if you can tell, this histogram is way off to the right side. I'm going to have to introduce some black to that. So I'm going to slide this over a little bit like that. Bring the white in. Give us some uh, natural white. And then I'm going to start now adjusting this a little bit more contrast, and that looks pretty good. Now notice it's showing 31.84 and 244 as our adjustments. So when I hit OK, we can take a look over here in the levels and we can see 31, 244, and then 0.84. Up in the hue saturation, there's that 730 and minus 3. So it's actually recording everything that we're doing. Now, before I continue, what I want to do is I want to actually come over here and go to the Layers palette and then duplicate this layer. I can either take that layer, that background layer that's locked, and drag it down here to the plus sign, or just simply hit Command-J on the keyboard. Just like that. And as you can see, it, it duplicated that background image. Now with this one right here, we're going to go up to, since we're still recording, we're going to go up to Filter, Filter Gallery. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And as you can see right now, we already have our half tone already applied to it. But what I want to do is I want to add actually some reticulation as well. So if I just hit reticulation, well, now my half toning is gone. So what I want to do is I want to go back to the half tone like this, okay, and then come down to the bottom and click that little plus sign. So the half tone has been repeated. However, now I want to click on the reticulation. And what you see now is we have a good combination of the two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up and hit OK. We're going to go back to the layers palette and then take that opacity and then drop that opacity down. Because what I really wanted to see here, if I can zoom in and show you a little bit here, I want to make a nice half-tone pattern dot effect, but also give it a little bit more detail in it in between those dots, so that gives a nice composition feel to the image. All right, so now that we have that, we're going to take that and then go up to Layer and then Flatten this image. Just flatten it down like this, and then slide that back over. And the last thing I want to do is just simply save this image. It's a JPEG image. Just simply hit Command S on the keyboard, like that, and then we'll save it at quality 12 and we'll hit OK. And at that point right there, we, we're all set with our with our action. And now we're going to, as you can notice, a little icon over here just changed here. And now we're going to come over here to the very bottom. And don't forget this very important step to hit stop 
on the action. So now that this entire action now has been recorded and it's nicely tucked away inside of the Sapia set. So now I'm gonna just come over here and just close this out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this folder. Inside this folder we have several images and what we wanna do is we wanna create the effect that we just did with this random image over here on the right to all of these instead of opening them all up one after another. Again, it could be done also in bridge, but we want to do it by creating a drop. And I'll show you how to make the droplet image. Just go over to Photoshop. You don't have to have any images open and go to File, come down here to Automate, and then go all the way down here to Create Droplet. All right, so now the first thing that this dialog box is asking you is, where do you want to save the droplet in? So let me choose the folder. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go down to the on the desktop. And on the desktop, we have this random objects copy folder. That's the one we want to use inside of here. And then we'll hit save. That's where we'll save it inside of that folder. The next one is, is what set do you want to use? Remember, we had other sets in here, okay? Default actions, watercolor artists, and so forth. But what we want to do is we want to save it in the sepia set. And then there's only one action inside of there, so it's this one. That's the one we're going to use. Over here to the right side, the destination, just simply save and close. You don't have to do anything more than that. And then we'll just simply hit OK. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to take my folder back over here. And if you notice, there's a new item that's just been added inside of this folder. It's the actual droplet itself right there. Now all you have to do at this point is simply just take an image and drag it and then drop it on top of there. And what's gonna happen, it's gonna open up inside of Photoshop like this and then do its effects and then close, save and close. Just like that and then there's your image already set up for you. It looks really good. You can also take several images. I can just grab these four if I wanted to or I could grab them all. Just simply take that, drag it up on top of the droplet and then let Photoshop and the actions do its thing. And what I like about this technique is it's a real time saver. You can get a lot of images done at one time and you're not wasting a whole lot of energy opening and closing a bunch of other images. So we can just finish up, finish these up like that. Closes up nicely and we got these three more left over to take those and simply just drag them on top of that sepia halftone droplet. There we go. And now if you take a look at one of the images, let's say the stop sign here, get a good close look of it, you'll have a really nice texture going on here with a couple of different filters applied and some color corrections. So there you go, creating a droplet inside of Adobe Photoshop.